All right, I'm just going to put up our PowerPoint here so we can get started with our introductions. I always forget to start it from the top. <laughs> Sorry about that. My computer's being a little bit slow. Sorry, friends, my PowerPoint seems to be taking its time. All righty. So thank you everyone for joining Let's Talk Recruitment. Uh, today is a special type of event where we've invited mostly coordinators from the communities, uh, those helping out community members, taking a look at programs or expanding their careers. And so we've invited them to this session so that we can explore some new programs and upcoming programs so that we can plan ahead and you can connect your members with uh, appropriate CMTN employees to help them out with registration and the application process along the way. So before we get started, I like to do some territory acknowledgements and we'll start with our Coast Mountain acknowledgement, acknowledging the traditional indigenous territories in which we serve, live and work, the Haida, the Simshan, the Haisla, the Niska, the Kitsan, and the Wet'suwet'en. Uh, my name is Jill Stevens, and I'm one of the First Nations Access Coordinators here at the Terrace Campus. My traditional name is Kuka Gwajiks. I come from the Niska Nation, uh, specifically the village of Lakaltzap. I am a Lucky Boo, and I come from Wilk Duke, but I am uh, gratefully living on the unceded traditional territory of the Simshan people, uh, acknowledging Wapudu Wai, uh, the Kitsum Kalem, uh, and Signum Hanak Basun, who holds the territory, also acknowledging the Kitsilasu people um, it, within the Terrace region as well. So we are recording the session and we will share it ourselves, but we ask that you uh, refrain from taking any audio or video recordings of the, the session, just due to the nature of the topics and the confidentiality of those participating today. Thank you for understanding. So uh, now that we've gone through two of our agenda items, our next item is the CMTN introduction. So offering some space for the CMTN employees joining us today to also introduce themselves and acknowledge the territory that they're on today. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Rosalind. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rosalind Scott. I am with the Trades Department at Coast Mountain College, and I'm the Career Consultant Case Manager. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the trades at any point, um, if you'd like, you can certainly reach out to me and get a hold of me. And if I need to direct you to somebody else, I'll make sure that you get a hold and can get to the right person you need to speak to. 
Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that I, as well as the college here, I'm at the Terrace campus, but I'm working out of my home office and I'm also located on the ancestral and traditional lands of the Shimshan. Thank you. Thanks, Should I pass Rosalind. it on? Yeah, definitely. We'll pass it over to the First Nations Access Coordinators and we'll start in our usual fashion of going down the virtual highway and starting with Sharon. Over to you, Sharon. I'm Sharon Oski. My traditional name is which was given to be my, my father's family. I am um, coming to you from Prince Rupert and on the um, ancestral tribal territories of the Simshan people specifically. Samogad Yahan and the Gitmogyot tribe. Happy to be here with you today. Um, looking forward to hearing more about these programs and connecting um, our First Nations peoples around our region. Thank you. I'll pass it over to uh, B. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Veronica. <laughs> Um, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. I hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Veronica Wechter. I also work out of the Terrace campus with Jill. Uh, I grew up and currently live on the traditional Timshan territories, um, which I'm closest to the Kitsum Kalum and the Kitsilasu villages. Uh, I'm really excited to hear more about these programmings today. Um, of course, if anyone has any questions or wants to connect about funding, uh, please connect to me. I'll be putting uh, we'll be putting our emails there in the chat too. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for today. So thanks for having me. I'll pass it over to Kelly. I'm Mahilu. Hi, my name is Kelly Nice. I'm the First Nations Access Coordinator for the Hazelton Campus. I am Gitsan, and my Gitsan name is Guhis Jokes, and I live, work, and play on the unceded traditional territory of the Gitsan Nation. I am too very excited to hear about the culinary program, the welding program, and uh, yes, we had a, we have had a couple of um, the cook, professional cook level one programs out of Hazleton, and I'm hoping that we can have some of the graduates from that program um, carry on and join this uh, culinary diploma program. And yes, we are here. If you would like any assistance, um, if you're unsure how to uh, uh, go through the application process, we can help you. We can. Uh, uh, provide you assistance or else um, direct you to the right people. Um, and we also are here for you to help with any, any funding issues that you might have. Uh, thank you. So I'll turn it over to Katie. Good morning, everyone. Katie Humphrey, First Nations Access Coordinator for the Smithers Campus, currently working in a regional capacity. Um, so we work with all students from all areas. Um, I'm from to Kamloops to Sikwekmik, which is the Kamloops area. Um, but I live, work, and play on the traditional unceded territory of the Wet'suwet'en, which I call home, raising three beautiful children. So I just look forward to supporting you all today. And if there's any questions along the way, uh, we're here to help students with application processes and confirming funding. So thank you. me and First Nations Access Coordinators and Rosalyn. And we'll pass it over to Darlene for a quick introduction. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I am Darlene Godfrey. I am culinary arts instructor and coordinator for the program. And I'm here today to present to you a passionate program <laughs> that's been in the works for many years. So. I would like to acknowledge, uh, sorry, I have a cat here that wants to help me. 
uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Shipshire people of Kitsukalm, especially the Lucky Blue Clan on whose unceded traditional territory the Terrace Campus is located. And I um, have lived, played, and worked in this territory for almost all of my life, so I have a, a passion for the area. And that's me. Do I need to move on to the next part think, or no? Uh, I think we'll just hear from Shauna for a quick okay. introduction first, and then we'll we'll uh, create a little bit of space to hear from Cassandra and Beverly as well, so that we can uh, see where they're coming from. So over to Shauna for a quick introduction. Hi there, I'm Shauna Statch. I am the lead hand of the trades department. Um, thank you all for joining us today. I am also on the Terrace campus and would like to acknowledge the Sim Sham people um, of Kitsum Kalem, especially the Laxi Wu clan on whose unceded traditional territory the Terrace campus is on. Um, I also live about three minutes away and I have uh, lived, worked and played on in this uh, area for my whole life as well. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about a pro the programs we're offering today. Thanks, Sydney, Darlene, and Shauna. So I'd like to open up uh, just a couple minutes here uh, to see who is joining us today. So I'd kindly ask if you can do a quick introduction of your name, where you're from, and the current position you're holding. So while we go in alphabetical order, and we'll start with Beverly. Good morning, everybody. My name is Beverly Russell, and I'm phoning you or joining you from uh, the from Get Meow. And my current role in the community is um, I oversee employment and training um, for the community. So thank you very much, and pleasure meeting you. And uh, nice to see you again, Kelly. <laughs> thank you, Beverly. Uh, and Cassandra, would you mind introducing yourself as well? I've stepped away from her computer for a few minutes and that's a okay we can cruise on Cassandra feel free to put your introduction into the chat as well so without further ado I'll pass it over to Darlene to start us out with um, information about the West Coast Culinary Program and as you can see uh, their information is on the screen there too so if you like drop that down and ask them any questions feel free but over to you Darlene Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, continue. And sometimes I get mixed up in this stuff. So bear with me. Sorry. Share screen. And look at all this stuff I have up here. Let's. There we go. We used to do this every day in class, but when I'm not in class, I haven't been in class since Christmas, so. Okay, here we go. I can't see anybody but my PowerPoint. Can you guys see my PowerPoint? Hello? No, I'm not seeing it just yet. Okay. Hold. You change first. There we go. See it now? Oh, yep. There. I got it on my end. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this new program is starting in September. It's a two year diploma program which will also enable past students who have either professional cook level one or professional cook level two to come in and pick up some of the different components to complete a two-year program. So I have an acknowledgement in here. Uh, Coast Mountain serves seven First Nations in Northwest British Columbia, Haida, Shimshin, Niska, Haisla, Kitsan, Wet'suwet'en, and Taltan. 
and acknowledges the traditional territory on the campuses where the campuses reside on. Uh, it's a two-year uh, diploma program, and several of the courses will be de delivered during the time of year that harvesting will be available. So there's, I have uh, uh, some more information coming later to, to sketch out exactly when the different courses to make up the program will be delivered. Uh, so this is program has been a vision of Brad Fennard, who is a co-worker uh, of mine and myself for many years. To see it come into reality is very exciting. Food trends are moving to providing the Indigenous foods in British Columbia institutions. So I've sat on a couple of webinars in where um, they're trying to find pathways to enable uh, traditional foods to become available in institutions, particularly hospitals or even in school settings to uh, provide that level of nutrition and comfort foods to people. It's still in the process, which in turn means that up and coming chefs will be in high demand with unique experiences that the West Coast Culinary Program will be able to provide. And it introduces apprentices to indigenous culture from Northwest British Columbia. So I was on a webinar yesterday and they actually showed that indigenous food cookery in the province makes up only 1% of um, available qualified chefs to provide uh, food to, to, um, in, in the indigenous uh, traditional uh, food preparation methods. So the objectives of the program are to offer food training in traditional indigenous and modern methods from harvest to preserving and cooking, and recognize the significance food plays in the culture of local First Nations communities. This program is in no way coming into local areas and taking food away from local harvesters. This is simply an exposure for uh, up and coming chefs to be able to be uh, opened up to the different possibilities in food preparation. There are several components to the program. There are required courses and then there's this, uh, uh, elective courses of which the students were picked two out of these uh, possible electives. So we're, our foundation courses are professional cook level one, professional cook level two, an advanced baking course, uh, seafood, which is fish and shellfish, which is harvesting and processing and work experience. And the elective courses will be Uligan, harvesting and processing, foraging, harvesting and processing, wild game and fowl, processing and cooking, and in at culinary international exchange, which may not actually be international, but provide uh, a different scope of training in a different institution, which could be in Canada. So professional cook is a foundation. It's a required course. Uh, apprentices will re receive instruction and experience based on the industry training authority learning competencies for level one. And then the same happens in PC2, professional cook level two, where it's they're progressing their uh, level of skill from professional cook level one. So to break down the different components, uh, fish and shellfish is actually a six-week program. There will be field school activities involved. We're taking the classroom to the local fish and shellfish harvest areas and partnering with local hosts that enable students to participate in the harvest and processing with attention to, in, to Indigenous customs and traditions. The baking component is also another required course. It's a three-week course on its advanced baking skills, uh, almost taking them up to Red Seal level. Work experience is a partnership between students and an employer and Coast Mountain College. Uh, students will gain work experience hours outside of Coast Mountain College in industry. Uh, these hours are required for certification in the level one professional cook. They'll need an additional 400 hours to become fully certified at level one and students will be paid while they're uh, working in different uh, facilities. Uligan is an elective. 
uh, field school activities, taking a classroom to the outdoors, and per again, partnering with local hosts, and enable students to participate in the harvest processing with attention to Indigenous customs and traditions. Harvesting and foraging is another elective. Field school activities, classroom on the land, working with local First Nations hosts, travel the land to harvest traditional foods and to preserve and use these foods. Uh, wild game and fall is another elective. Uh, field school activities, again, classroom on the land, travel to where wild game and fall are harvested and working with local First Nations harvesters, learn about the processing, cooking and preserving of wild game and fowl using traditional cultural methods and modern methods as well. Uh, the international exchange is a student placement with a host institution, can be Canadian or international. This is an option for culinary students to obtain cooking experience outside of this region. And this is just a breakdown on the projected schedule. It, it looks kind of, it's kind of hard to read, but it, uh, PC1 will begin in August of this year. Uligan will be in March of 2022. That's the next March coming up. Uh, work experience uh, is from April to June, which enables students uh, time to make their 400 hours. At the, when I talk about work experience, if a student comes in with, with uh, a complete 1,000 hours, it can be those hours can be assessed and they can be granted credit for the work experience piece. Um, international exchange is another elective and uh, it's to be determined for the dates. Uh, fish and shellfish are July to August for six weeks. Harvest and forage would be September 2022. Wild game and fowl would be October 2022. Uh, PC2 would then begin in November and the baking component would begin in March. Um, so it's just a basic breakdown for, for the two years of the program. So it is our intent to connect with local First Nations communities and knowledge keepers to present a program which reflects the traditions and culture of harvesting and processing and cooking of these traditional foods using local recipes. This program relies heavily on partnering with local host uh, um, knowledge keepers, territory holders, etc. For our CMTN to provide cultural and traditional experiences for students of the West Coast Culinary Diploma Program, I respectfully ask for your assistance in recommending territory holder hosts to deliver a unique experience to our students. And thank you for the opportunity to present this program. Uh, I'll answer any questions you may have as I let my students know. If I do not have the answer, I will find it. So that's the um, um, the presentation. I did present pr a very similar PowerPoint to First Nations Council uh, about a month ago, I believe it was. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, you have my contact information as well, if you prefer to email it to me. Um, I have been uh, developing curriculum to develop to to uh, deliver these programs in a very unique and honest and respectful way. Uh, any input is greatly welcome at, at any time. Uh, unfortunately, the Uligan harvest, I was not able to get up onto Nishka lands, although I have a contact there and I am waiting for some, some video to come. So <laughs> I have the thumb drive waiting for him to load it onto for me. Um, and I have been out to the Gatas where they invited me to uh, uh, their smokehouse for some, they're smoking some sea lion, uh, just just right at the end of the, um, uh, the Ugin harvest, which I felt very honored to be able to be out there and run into some past students as well. So yeah, questions and... Thank you, Darlene, that was a beautiful presentation. It also makes me very hungry taking a look at those beautiful <laughs> pictures of the herring eggs and the olikins there. Uh, it's such a fantastic program, really excited for it. Um, 
if Beverly or Cassandra has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask, or you can pop it into the chat as well. Uh, I also included Darlene's email address one, one more time in the chat too, if you want to scoop that and email her any questions. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions for Darlene right at this moment, we'll pass it over to Shauna to give us some information about Millerite and welding. Over to you, Shauna. Sorry, I always struggle to unmute. I noticed that uh, Kelly had her hand up, and I think she may have had a question for Darlene. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, I was just going to ask if the if the Courses will be face to face in Terrace, or is it? Yeah. Yes, that is the plan. Although nothing in now nowadays is ever guaranteed, as we all know, things just seem to be evolving at all times. But we are anticipating uh, beginning in August with face to face classes. That is on the schedule at this point in time, and hopefully okay. everybody gets vaccinated and. Things will get kind of back to normal. Yeah, I was just wondering if it was, if any of the uh, courses would be offered by distance learning, but it's all face to face. It's all face to face, now, particularly right? okay. when we come into the field, the field school situation. Um, okay. It's and and cooking is one of those fields where we well, in most trades programs are the same. It's very difficult to deliver from a distance. We managed uh, this past year by doing halftime online, which was a struggle for a lot of students, and then halftime in the kitchen, where we focused specifically on skills because we have no customers to feed. So the students have eaten very, very well this past year, so. <laughs> which is always a good thing, right? So, yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta say, I miss that food. That's for sure. Especially with the students coming by to come see us and bringing us a little plate of goodies. I'm excited to get back to that. Uh, any other questions before I move over to Shauna? Um, th sorry, this is Sharon at the Rupert Campus. I was just wondering, can you possibly share your presentation with us? So when we have people coming, because um, the word is going to get out, right? And um, it'll be great to have something um, solid in front of us so that we can can share your ideas. And um, we definitely will be sharing your contact information. But it'll be just great to have your presentation as reference. Thank you. I can share it with uh, Jill and she can forward it on to you. Okay, excellent. Well, That'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Darlene. Any other questions? All right. Seeing none, we'll pass it over to Shauna. Hi. So, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about our upcoming Rupert programs. Um, so we do have uh, a lot of trades programs and the home base is generally Terrace, but then we like to do uh, regional programs where we kind of bring them in and every three years do kind of a rotation. So what we have coming up this fall um, in Prince Rupert on the Prince Rupert campus is uh, Welding Foundations. In the Welding Foundations program, students, um, get to learn a lot of things about welding, and we also have some essential skills in there, occupational skills, along with the cutting and gouging processes and fusion and brazing welding and oxy fuel. So all sorts of things um, to prepare them, not only to become welders, but also um, to be successful in, in the workforce. Um, I was really hoping that one of our instructors would be available to uh, come and talk to you about it today, because. Obviously, they know a lot more about welding than I do, um, but they are all busy with students today, so we're unfortunately unable to make it. Um, so, yeah, welding will be running September 7th to, uh, I believe it is, April 1st, and it's a 28-week program. Um, yeah, 
So what we have in um, coming up in the winter of 2022, starting in January, is the Millwright program. Um, Millwright, again, has a lot of things. The thing that's really nice about the foundations programs as a whole is it really gives the students a lot of time to get in um, and not only learn about the trade, but learn about good work ethic and um, occupational skills and what it's really like to be in the industry. And so in our Millwright program, we also have um, a lot of trades math and um, there, it, it really, Millwright is one of those programs that they generally call the jack of all trades because you can take the Millwright Foundations program and decide that, you know, you really like the fabricating piece of it and you might go into metal fabricating or into welding or you can kind of branch off into all sorts of areas. Um, and Millwright program is a 24 week program. So it's starting in January and ending in June. Hey, thank you, Shauna. Any questions about the programs for Shauna? So with no questions, I just want to add, if anybody has questions, thank you, Katie. She's added my email into the chat. So anybody wanting to email me, I can certainly provide more information for the specific programs, uh, whether they're for foundations or our other programs that we have involved. So again, if you just need more information, I can certainly share and we can talk about costing or you know what the fees might be for the program so um, please again just feel free to get a hold of any of us we're actually here as part of your support team so um, any of us will be more than happy to answer any further questions you might have and and help uh, you know get you get you situated with all the information you need one of the things I do want to share is um, if you are going to be putting students through um, we do have um, we do have a form that we ask if you can have your students fill out. It helps us with support of our students, and that's a release of information form that we can make sure we provide to you for the college. It allows us to be in connect, uh, connect with the sponsors without the student release of information. When you put the students through, uh, we're not able to connect direct with the sponsors because we don't have the signed uh, forms. So I just thought I'd throw that out there as well. It's on our website, or I can get that information information to you as well. Um, again, just to reiterate what Shauna said about the foundations program, um, it's a real good base to help your students um, get a base in the industry and then move on to their different levels of apprenticeship. Um, it shows a, a, an employer that the students are really willing to work and put the work effort in and that they've built their base uh, to go on to apprenticeship toward uh, their red seal in any of the industries. And again, um, these are um, programs and careers that are going to be very much high in demand. We just recently had an LNG rep coming through uh, the classrooms just to talk about it and he shared with me that the hiring, um, they're looking to start hiring uh, within the next few months and they're looking at hiring hundreds of tradespeople. So it's, it's really great uh, that we're getting students and people in community into the programs now. I just wanted to add that. Thanks. I just interject one little thing. It's been a bit, bit of a passion and I've sat in on a couple of webinars and it's about females. Uh, cooking, a lot of people think it's more females, but actually it's lead. Most chefs are male, number one. But when you get into your uh, more traditional trades like the carpentry, the, the, the trades that Shauna looks after, please encourage your female female uh, clients to apply and to get into them. It's it's from some of the webinars I've sat in on, and I can kind of say this because we're all, we're all female here today <laughs> from what I can see, but it's a bit of a passion. There's nothing stopping a female from becoming a carpenter or a welder or a heavy duty mechanic or an automotive mechanic. And the more females that get into the different trades, the more the barriers come down. Because right now, that it, it may sound like a negative thing, but if you're a female and you wanna get hired on as an automotive mechanic, you may not have the opportunity a male would. But to have females 
flooding the trades can only only do the trades uh, justice. So I, that's just a bit of a passion of mine. And I think Shauna feels exactly the same way uh, yeah, in female in trades. So it, it's it's very important. Thank you very much for bringing that to, uh, that up, Darlene. Um, absolutely right. The more the more women we can get in here, um, the better our programs will be. Um, and you know we've had some some amazing female students, and they come in and they they get it. They have that extra little finesse, and they just do a fantastic job, and can really really have lots of career opportunities by doing that. Great, thank you so much for that spotlight. It is incredibly important, and there are some pretty great bursaries out there for women's in trades too. So um, that's something that we can also assist with. But I see Rosalind raised her hand. Over back over to you, Rosalind. Sorry, I just wanted to interject one more thing. Thank you for that, guys. That's very important as well. Um, I just wanted to interject. Um, if you're looking for the information and are wondering where we have all this, again, it is on our, we have trades web pages on the college website. So just uh, go direct to coastmountaincollege.ca uh, trades, and then you will see under foundation uh, or apprentices, you will see all these programs listed. We have all the data and campuses where we're having programs so you'll be able to find any for Terrace, Rupert, Hazelton, Smithers, Houston when they're being offered the dates are there so if you use the tabs to go through you'll also be able to find exactly what the program requirements are what you need to get into the programs also what the cost of the programs are so we're trying to make sure that our website is up to date as as we can as much as possible with the current information and we're trying to get that to be your go-to for for um, anything that you might need and again either if you have any questions any of us can help as well thanks again Hi, um, I just wanted to add that uh, if you would like to leave us your email address in the chat, we can send you the program info um, sheets and it will include all of the admission requirements, the course outline, the, the costs. And also um, we created this step-by-step -step info sheet that we can share with you as well. Any, if, if you know of anyone that's interested, you know, this, we can we'll, we can send that to you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, that's something that I was actually just going to scoop into. So I see we have a few more minutes left in this session. And I actually added a couple slides just in case so that we can take a peek at that application checklist. this slideshow here. So as you can see, we have quite a few people in student services to help you out too. Uh, so not only these wonderful ladies here help answer your questions, but there are uh, a wide variety of different student services members to help you with each section along the way, uh, including us, the First Nations Access Coordinators, we will have learning assistants, student union, international recruitment, student engagement, education advisors, and accessibilities. This is the information for all of those uh, departments there. Uh, so we do try to stick along the same lines as um, uh, group emails, so it's a little bit easier for everyone to connect with who's closest to you or who's available. So we have EA at CoastMountainCollege.ca, LAS at CoastMountainCollege.ca, and a wide variety of other email addresses that you can see in this checklist. And we can definitely share this uh, list as well uh, in the emails if you'd like to have the contact information and what these departments do. So we went a little bit over the, the summary of the FNAC roles as uh, the FNACs uh, shared what we do throughout the presentation. This is just a summary of that and uh, we work to create that welcoming environment by providing the support to our Indigenous students who require assistance with academic, emotional or financial issues. Uh, we also assist students to access community services and resources, promoting cultural awareness and coordinating cultural events on campus that anyone can join. You don't need to be Indigenous to join our events. We welcome everyone into our events. 
So we do offer that academic support in terms of mapping, taking a look at the next steps in your process uh, from application uh, all the way through um, your entire semesters. So um, you can reach out to us if you need help navigating those funding opportunities, referral to other student services, connecting with coordinators and policy and procedure reviews. And uh, because Kelly was a champion for this checklist, I'll pass over to Kelly to explain a couple of these steps in the checklist. Hi, um, yeah, this is just a bird's eye view of how to go through the application process. We thought it would be helpful to anyone interested in uh, applying for a program. So we will share this with you. It's just, uh, it talks about um, once you choose your path, um, we'll connect you with uh, student services team member, and that would be the education advisors. They will review the entrance requirements with the student, and uh, and if you don't meet those requirements, we uh, we do have uh, uh, the upgrading programs available. And as you can see, that it would be the education advisor would discuss all your options, and then determine when to apply. We always say uh, apply early as possible. So you can have your, you know, make sure you meet all the requirements and, um, and uh, get your acceptance. You'll receive the notification by email and uh, once you've met all requirements. So there it is all in a nutshell and uh, we'll share this with you. Thank you, Kelly. And I'll invite Veronica to unmute and just go through this little other checklist we've created for student success. So after uh, you're all settled in and registered. Yeah, so this year has been very different. Um, so this is kind of to check in because usually we're on campus and we can kind of have that face to face check in. Uh, but this is kind of like a self check in. So asking yourself, have you logged into Brightspace? That's one of the main things because you're gonna be putting all of your little assignments in there and there's updates and a lot of great information through there. So that's really one of the main access points. Um, but you should always get a course syllabus every year when you start your program. Um, so that's really important to note too because it'll have a breakdown of your grades usually. So um, yeah. Check those over. Have you connected with your instructor? It's just the main means of communications. All of these things, all of these questions will really help um, guide you to student success. So um, if you have any issues with those things there, um, if any student does, we direct them to connect to us. Um, so all of the student services team, we can all address each of these different issues and, and get you on the right path to success. Um, so, of course, we also have this really great um, online self-paced tutoring support available. So we have that as a clickable link as well. So, um, so these three um, flat sheets that we just shared right now, um, we send them out to students so that they kind of have um, like guidelines just to know where they're at and will I be successful this year? Do I, do I know everything that's going on to help me? Um, and just make it easier for them to connect when there is an issue arise. You know, when you're already frustrated about something, maybe not being able to log in, uh, just knowing that, okay, this is the right person to connect to. Okay, I can just get, you know, this worked out. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of why we made these more of a visual and easy to share. Um, so if um, you like, we can definitely send these over to you. I see we have one email there. So um, we'll definitely be doing that. Um, and of course, uh, the students can expect this little uh, simplified checklist to help them out throughout the year too. So yeah, I think that's all for me. I'll pass it back to Jill. Thanks. Thanks, V. And uh, it's important to note too that you, maybe for some of your programs, you might not be going into Brightspace either, but it's also a nice little checklist just in case we do come into uh, virtual distributed learning again in the fall. Um, but it also lists other things that you'll need to consider when you do get into programs like the textbooks. So. 
go on to our next slide here. And it's just information about tutor me. So that's something that V was just chatting about. Uh, so I'll invite Katie to unmute and explain a little bit about tutor me. Good afternoon, everyone. Katie Humphrey. Um, tutor me service is fairly new this year. Um, due to COVID, um, there's more online resources for our students. So don't feel like you are struggling um, if you need help with your assignments. There is a link, I guess we could share that in the chat here shortly. Um, so 300 subjects, so thousands of tutors. And I know we had someone experiment and try this out and you will receive a response within, I believe, 24 to 48 hours regarding your assignments or questions you might have. And they match you really well with, um, with a tutor too. So um, yes, reach out anytime for tutor me information. Great, thanks Katie. So we also provide holistic support as uh, noted in our summary there. So we, also, we provide the academic support, but we also provide these items. And I'll allow Katie to keep going into this, this slide here before I pass over to Sharon. Holistic supports. So we help students not only with emotional, physical, like getting into school, um, financial emergencies. So if there's something um, that has arose in an emergency situation, we help with that as well. And we're fairly knowledgeable in our resources in our communities. I know I'm in Smithers. Um, so we all have the knowledge and the capabilities of referring students to the appropriate community services when needed or required. We also have a health and wellness fund. Health and wellness. I am going to go walk after this meeting here. Um, but I'm a champion for wellness. So if you um, do steps on your Fitbit or being just aware of what you do as a student as well, um, taking care of yourself when you're in school because it's important. Uh, we offer cultural activities and a welcoming environment. Great, thank you, Katie. She certainly is a champion for wellness, not only for students, but she definitely helps us out as well and ensuring we're taking our time for wellness too. So I'm gonna pass over to Sharon to explain how to keep up with us and uh, other Coast Mountain uh, news and information. Hello again. Um, so we're very easy to catch up to. Um, we're on social media. Coast Mountain College is uh, on social media, Facebook, um, Instagram. The um, addresses are on the post there. We also, FNAX also put out a newsletter every month and it has all the current information. It has the health and wellness information we share. Um, we try to focus on languages and regions, like languages and nations in our region. Um, the Simshian, the Haida, the Nisqa, so um, the Gikzen and the Wet'suwet'en. Um, this month is go we're going to focus on the Haisla um, because they're also in our region. So all of that is on our our newsletter. We post um, upcoming events on the newsletter and um, different department information. Health, like I said, health and wellness, um, bursaries, scholarships, funding information, funding contacts. So, and and with different departments, um, programs coming up like the um, the um, Millwright and the um, Welding in Prince Rupert, and then with Darlene's West Coast Culinary, we will be featuring, featuring those in the newsletter, in upcoming newsletters when it's time. Um, so um, the newsletter is uh, available to anyone who wants to check it out. So it's on our, on our webpage as well. So if you want to contact the FNACs directly, you can contact us at uh, FNAC at coastmountaincollege.ca and any one of us will, will answer your um, your email request. Thanks. 
Thanks, Sharon. We always try to uh, share the um, the newsletter, especially with our trade students, just because we know that they're usually their daily uh, academic life is pretty jam packed and uh, filling it out with the practical and the theory pieces. So we understand that getting to our cultural events can be a little bit of a struggle, but we wanna offer uh, something that they can do in their own time, like reviewing this newsletter and still taking in culture when they need it and keeping up with us if we have any news to share. And that's it for the First Nations Access Coordinators. Looks like we're ending just on time here. So if you have any questions, you're more welcome to take the last two minutes to open up your mics and ask us, put it into the chat, or scoop those email addresses in the chat and you can email us later too. I just have more of a comment. Um, for me, so I'm going on eight years now at the college, I uh, still love what I do, uh, working with our students and staff and um, helping students get their foot in the door with education. Um, but uh, for me, um, getting the intro to trades at the high school level um, really helps students also figure out, you know, if they're interested in trades, if they want to continue to do a trade. But I've only heard good good news stories from our students who've completed, you know, different levels of trades and who are now working in the field or own their own businesses. I've heard many of students now who've, you know, completed their um, education with us and now um, have done really well for themselves. So I just want to, I'm proud of them too. But the getting in there with the intro to trades, I think, helps them figure out, you know, their education journey. And I'm I'm happy that they they chose us. Thanks, Katie. You yeah, know, it's we we definitely feel like the proud aunties on campus, that's for sure, with all of our students that we interact with. Any other last comments before we take off for the rest of our afternoon? I'd just like to say thank you all for joining us today. Um, I just uh, will be doing my best to help recruit for the programs and uh, yes, thank you so much. I'd just like to say thank you for your wonderful presentations, um, Darlene and Shauna. Um, Looking forward to working with and and um, for the post-secondary education coordinators for joining us today. Um, looking forward to working with your students and um, possibly enrolling them in in our trades programs and other programs that Coast Mountain College offers. So I look forward to hearing from you all in the near future. Thank you. Have a great day. Yes, it was great to spend time together today and I love hearing more about the opportunities for students. I can tell these are going to be really beneficial for them. Uh, as a Coast Mountain alumni myself, I love seeing the different pathways that uh, students are available to take. So it was great to come together today and um, take this video to share and I think it'll be great. So yeah, thanks again and hope you all have a great afternoon. I just want to say thank you so much to all of the presenters for sharing um, some exciting news for different programs um, being available in our region. And um, it's a pleasure uh, meeting a lot of you ladies. I think out of the whole call, I only recognize Kelly. <laughs> and um, I just want to say thank you once again and have a great e afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly, to um, to everyone joining us today and providing this information for these beautiful programs coming up. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime and we can assist you along the way. 
But with that, we'll close our circle today and hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Please take good care out there and stay safe. Take care, everyone.